Several weeks ago, I was blown away by how I can install packages from multiple distributions under one system. I made a video here, and that distribution is called Vanilla OS. It is an immutable system based on Ubuntu. Then I found out that Vanilla is not the only distribution able to do this. There is another one called Blend OS, which is based on pure Arch Linux and also immutable. Let's give it a look now. A little background before we start. In order to install packages from other distributions, these two systems are utilizing a container technology called Podman, one of the biggest competitors of Docker. Because both of these distributions are immutable, so the applications are not directly installed onto the host system, but inside a container. For example, when user issues the command to install a DNF package in either of these systems, they will set up a Fedora-based container, install the application there, and then export the icon to the host system. You will use the host desktop to render the applications. So on the surface, users will not notice the difference compared to the native apps. However, the difference between these two distributions is that Vanilla is using an open source tool called DistroBox, while Blend OS has migrated away to their own implementation. DistroBox provides the ability to install any distributions package on your current system, and it can also be installed independently, meaning if you just want to try out what it feels like to use multiple source packages on your current Linux system, you can simply set up DistroBox without having to hop onto a totally new distribution. On paper, Blend OS is superior to Vanilla OS, given that users can use the apt, dnf, and pacman commands directly. While in Vanilla OS, we still have to use different flags to differentiate all the containers. Anyway, let's install the system now. First thing I did after downloading the ISO file was to copy it into the Ventoy USB drive. You can refer to this video on what Ventoy is. And the live CD just wouldn't start. I saw there were a lot of logs mentioning USB, and my laptop was being charged through the USB Type-C port. I was wondering if that was the issue, but it still wouldn't go into the system after I switched to the stock power source. I tried both normal set and regular option. Neither worked. I decided to take a look at the issue page of the project before I give up, and I saw other people having the same issue with Ventoy. So I found another USB and used the dd command to flash the ISO file. Then I was able to get into the installer. The funny thing is that before I got in, the wait time was still quite long compared to other distributions like CD. Never mind, let's start the installation now. It requires the user to connect to the internet before the actual install. Then it lets you choose the keyboard. Be aware here. You need to click the option button on the right side of the language to make the change. They're quite hard to see, and it took me several tries to figure it out. Then it goes through some common steps like other distros, time zone, user creation, and disk option before the actual installation. It also gives the option to install different desktop environment. I chose KDE here because I wanted to give the latest 5.27 a look and I have been using a lot of GNOME or GNOME-like systems lately. I need a change of scene urgently. I was then sitting there and watching the whole system being installed. It took around 10 minutes or so, and the first reboot got stuck right after that. I wasn't worried about the reboot because it is not the only distribution that stopped responding here during the first time boot up. And there are other similar instances mentioned on the GitHub page which are still open. I waited a long time, and this is the output from the console. After I forced the machine to power off and restart, it stuck at the Plymouth boot screen without going into the login screen. And with the help of Google, I saw people with same issue on Garuda Linux were told to disable fastboot and secure boot. I tried both without any luck. I then suspected that it might due to the missing NVIDIA GPU driver, so I unplugged the HDMI cable which I used to record the screen on another laptop, and tried using a very old trick I learned from Ubuntu, edit the grub entry by adding normal set 
to the boot up option, which still doesn't work. After waiting for more than 10 minutes without it going anywhere, I decided to give it up. I put it back into the Live CD and reinstalled the whole system with GNOME because it is working on the Live CD at the very least. And it worked. It took me no time to see the GNOME environment login page after I forced the system to shut off again when the installation finished. Now, let's see the welcome page. It has an interesting step about how to install applications. The instructions will be printed when the console is open. But when I was reading the message, the system froze. I can't move my mouse while using keyboard. I was highly suspecting the NVIDIA driver. So the second time I powered through the welcome page, I saw the update command is blend system update and it says not to use the pacman command to do the update. I tried it once, which says there is nothing to update, and then froze again. It's time to install the NVIDIA driver. According to its official website, users can install Arch packages including driver using the package manager directly without disabling the immutability. After forcing my laptop to shut down again, I used the method on the Arch wiki to install the NVIDIA driver. It started by creating an Arch container. So I was wondering if it would actually work and praying the system won't freeze again during the installation. I was lucky enough to see it finish and reboot the system. Another issue happened when I tried to enable multi-lib repo while installing the 32 NVIDIA support. The default setting does not have the multi-lib enabled, and I wanted to use Emacs to change the config file. After using Pacman to install the editor, I can't see it showing up in the binary path to start from terminal. I also tried using apt, but the system froze during the installation. Reboot, rerun the command, still no go. I also tried using the blend install command, not working either. I ended up using nano to make the change, and the system froze again while updating the repo. I forced the system to shut down twice in order to make the file change stick. But after that, neither blend nor pacman can pick up the change from this file to install the lib32 package. In the meantime, the system is constantly crashing with the NVIDIA package installed in both VLAN and X11 environment. I tried using the automatic X11 config command mentioned in the Arch wiki here. The whole system cannot pick up this command, and in the Arch container, even though it created the config file successfully, it couldn't detect any GPU inside, which is expected and the system is still crushing after that. Without being able to fix the crushes, I cannot go forward with this system. If you happen to know how to fix it, please leave a comment below. I'll probably try again after the system is more stable. Originally, I had high hopes for Blend OS because like vanilla OS, it can also install packages from other distributions. But given the experience I had, I wouldn't recommend others to install it unless they are feeling brave. If I remember it correctly, this is the first distribution after Gen 2 from this video that I can't even make it work properly enough to start gaming. So let's end the video here. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.